this? Me reviewing a show? Oh yeah, your eyes don't deceive you. It's time to cover Rooster Teeth Presents, a Netflix original Transformers War for Cybertron trilogy, Chapter 1, Siege, and Knuckles. Featuring Dante from The Devil. The War for Cybertron trilogy, not to be confused with the trilogy of games, is a trio of toy lines that come together to tell a single narrative. Siege, which covers the final days of the Cybertronian War between the Autobots and the Decepticons. Earthrise, covering the Transformers battle on, well, Earth, and a soon-to-be-revealed third and final part. So now, Netflix released Season 1 of their tie-in show, covering the Siege portion of the trilogy. Now, this isn't the first time Hasbro has made shows to tie in multiple toy lines to tell one story. First was the Unicron trilogy with the three shows, Armada, Energon, and Cybertron. Next was the Align continuity with the games, Prime, Rescue Bots, and Robots in Disguise. And then there was... Yeah, we, uh... We don't talk about those. So, how did this latest attempt fare? Well, very well. This is the first Transformer show that we acknowledge specifically made for older audiences, giving Siege a unique identity compared to the other mainstream Transformer show of the past. It has this gritty, dire tone that perfectly reflects the state of Cybertron at the time. It really gives you a sense of the Autobots' desperation to get off the planet and find a new home, or at the very least survive. As such, it has you sympathize with this small group of freedom fighters. The Decepticons, as well, are in a rather imposing force. You really do get a sense of scale of how much of the planet they control. When a fight goes down, it can be rather tense. The action is satisfying and well-animated, giant robot lips aside. It's fast-paced, but with a good enough sense of weight where it doesn't feel like regular humans flailing around and shooting with guns. This show isn't all about the fighting, though. Actually, there isn't a lot of it, period which is actually good. It makes the action sequences stand out more and have importance. A lot of the show is actually a lot of talking, drama, and reasoning things out. There's quite a bit of scenes with Autobots and Decepticons just having negotiations or arguments, or even Autobots against Autobots, Decepticons against Decepticons. It adds more nuance and realism that goes beyond pointless shooting and explosions. It continues to push forward the idea that this is a show for older audiences, because kids would no doubt get bored and ask for Optimus to start punching Megatron in those kissers of his, but for an older fan like me, it's fascinating and unique. Not to mention, it's still chock-filled with references for hardcore fans. Whether it be the Planet Velocitron or Sector 7, there's bound to be a little easter egg for you, but it's not intrusive. So if you're by any means new to Transformers or a casual fan, you can enjoy the show just fine. As for the characters, they're mostly rather good. They're all unique interpretations of these classic characters we know and love, but still maintain enough of their iconic elements. Optimus is still the compassionate leader we all know, but he's more naive where even the Autobots are unsure of his decisions. We haven't seen an Optimus like that since animated, really. Megatron is still cold, ruthless, and hungry for power, but he's not a soulless monster. He's willing to hear out Autobots and have a talk, just as long as the Decepticons reign in their negotiations. The only character who's an exception of being good here is Bumblebee. I get that he's an immensely popular character who needs to be in the show somewhere, but really, the show could go on fine enough without him. He's irrelevant until near the end, and he's way too different of a character. He's far too jaded and cynical, where I can really swap him with Ironhide or whatever, and it would make about as much sense. Another problem with Siege is the voice acting. I can understand not getting the classic actors, even though it would have been very cool, but I can live with it. However, most of the performances in this show blend together. Sometimes it's hard to keep track of who's talking because a lot of them sound the same. It was a miracle I had subtitles on so I could figure out who was talking in a heated debate. The animation also has a weird flaw. The characters look great unless you look at them from the back. I'm convinced that to make the character models, they scanned the toys into a computer and called it a day. And the thing about Transformers is that the toys have a thing called kibble which is basically poorly hidden remnants of the truck or vehicle mode that is usually placed in the back of the robots. Siege, in an ironic twist, keeps the kibble, so in some shots you'll see massive truck parts that obscure the robots and it can be rather distracting. Yes, we need to know that they can transform, but there's better ways to convey that. But these do not hamper the great storytelling and unique takes on the Transformers lore. I'm really glad I watched this, and it'll certainly tie me over until the next movie. I look forward to the next chapter of the story, but until then, I'm gonna give CJ Savage! This show is definitely worth a watch, especially if you're a Transformers fan. Besides, it's only six episodes. What have you got to lose?